Hi, everybody. So yeah, this is Fine Tuning Games. I'm Ben, and uh, it's a collaboration with John Kleinberg and Hoda Hidari. So the three of us, this project started because the three of us got together and sort of discussed what, if anything, do we have to say about generative AI. And um, one of these features that we sort of kept coming back to was that it gets described as a quote unquote general purpose technology. And so here I've pulled some like popular news articles. One of them describes ChatGPT as a quote anything tool. And uh, we think that there is something distinctive here. We know that, uh, of course, a technology like this isn't going to be used for anything. And, um, and some sort of purposes are, are, are more appropriate than others, depending on the context. So here, if you take the medical context, for example, um, you can imagine like on the left is an example of a medical notes summarization application of the technology seems potentially feasible, potentially reasonable. And on the right is sort of this depiction of like, you know, an all knowing robo doctor that you're supposed to trust with your medical information. And obviously that's a lot more far fetched. Um, so the point being that uh, there's something distinctive about the fact that this technology can be adapted into a variety of domains and it isn't just generative AI. So if you consider the case of 3D printing or cloud computing or image recognition, these are uh, 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 potentially multi-purpose technologies and it matters what purposes and what ends the technology is used for. So the question that we wanna ask is when you have a technology of this sort, who will adopt the technology and how will it be specialized and, and what are the implications for welfare and performance? And to answer these questions, we use a modeling approach and we draw from a, a body of work, especially in uh, sort of growth economics on this topic of general purpose technologies. There's also been work uh, in a similar vein on, on product innovation and product liability and some recent work trying to connect these literatures to um, generative AI. So the basic ingredients of, of the sort of model and the, and, and the dynamic that we're trying to describe here is that you have a generalist that produces some technology that might be applied across domains. And then you have one or more domain specialists who choose whether and how to adapt it to their domain. And already you can see some interesting dynamics that arise here. So um, you have this kind of feedback loop going on where a domain specialist strategy will depend, of course, on the capabilities of the general technology. But similarly, the generalist strategy will depend on the potential strategic responses from the specialists. If, if there were no specialists who enter into or use the, te the technology, the generalist might uh, not invest much in the technology. And then it gets even more complicated when you think about multiple specialists. So you can think like, a specialist DI's interest in adapting the technology for domain I might incentivize G to make a better technology, which then might pull in some other specialist DJ um, and increase their interest in adapting the technology for domain J. Um, and so the questions that we're really interested here are how much should each entity in invest in the technology and how should each entity divide the eventual payoff? So now I'll get a little bit more into the model. We use uh, game theory and economic theory to model this interaction. And uh, sort of, as I said before, there are a few necessary ingredients. So first, uh, player G, which stands for general purpose producer, brings the technology from zero to some performance alpha naught at a cost which we call phi naught. And then after this occurs, uh, 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 player D for domain specialist improves the performance from um, alpha naught to some potentially higher value alpha one at cost phi one. After this occurs, um, uh, the technology brings in some revenue uh, as a function of, of the like sort of final performance alpha one, but the revenue has to be distributed between G and D. So, the way we model this is that before any of this occurs, the two players have to enter into some sort of agreement on how they're going to distribute the revenue. So this is a, a, an agreement over a parameter uh, delta that um, determines how the revenue is shared. So G gets 
delta times revenue, D gets one minus delta times revenue. And so um, the utilities are simply the revenue shares minus the costs. And uh, as a concrete example, we can show how to proceed with the analysis of this game using polynomial costs. And, and we do this in the paper. And one thing that's uh, uh, nice about these, this functional form is that you have the sort of like decreasing marginal returns as investment becomes very high, uh, costs far exceed <coughs> revenue. And this is sort of, we think of this as how many economic products behave. Um, so our analysis consists of first, we, we have this like two stage sub game, uh, two stage game. And so we work backwards uh, and find the, like fix the sort of variables that we haven't solved yet and find uh, the player's individual strategies um, uh, starting with the last step in the game. And we're able to solve the, the strategies this way. And already we, we sort of uh, find uh, an interesting uh, result, which is that when we solve for the player's utilities, we find some non-monotonicity. So uh, if you look at like the generalist utility here, especially the red region where it's maximized, you see that the uh, utility is maximized uh, for delta values that aren't equal to one meaning that the generalist will actually opt to share some revenue with the specialist because doing so uh, sort of invokes more effort and leads to a, a, a more performant technology overall. Um, so uh, after we do this sort of uh, backward induction process, we're, we go back to the very first stage step in the game, which is uh, uh, this uh, agreement over how to share the revenue delta. And so the way that we sort of solve for this um, is, a, is through bargaining solutions. And, and bargaining games are a fundamental topic in economic theory. Um, uh, I'll give a very brief overview, but refer to the paper. So given some number of players, each with utility values who have to agree on some parameters x, um, the question is, how do they choose x? And there's both the normative version of the question, which is how should they or how ought they choose uh, some agreement. And there's the descriptive question of what, what might we expect the players to reach empirically. In our case so far, the number of players is two. We're, we're in this sort of simple world with one specialist. And the parameter is a one dimensional parameter delta. And there's a range of approaches that people have studied extensively of how to um, arrive at a bargaining solution. So for example, the vertical monopoly or utilitarian uh, solution maximizes the sum of the two players' utilities. The egalitarian solution maximizes the minimum between the players' utilities. And Nash bargaining maximizes the product between the utilities. So uh, just to give a quick illustration here, this is sort of a depiction of these different uh, joint utility approaches for identifying bargaining solutions and the gray, the grayed out region in these figures is sort of Pareto dominated um, uh, solution. So we search within the Pareto optimal set for uh, bargaining agreements. And uh, when we solve for the bargaining solutions, we find uh, a somewhat interesting qualitative result, which is that even if the ratio between the two players costs is very high um, or, or very close to zero, bargaining still leads to a revenue sharing agreement and non-zero investment from both players. So you still reach these agreements where both players are agreeing to cede some of the revenue to the other and both players are contributing. And so now, so far we've been in the world with just one domain specialist. We can generalize to multiple domain specialists and I won't spend too long on this model, but um, sort of in the same way we had that interesting um, uh, bargaining solution figure uh, in the last slide, uh, we, can, we have these interesting sort of Pareto shapes that we can solve for in the multiple specialist game. And the bargaining solutions are these sort of like wires coming through in, in uh, different colors. And, and uh, yeah, I, I, uh, we have a fuller version of the paper where we explore some of these directions. Um, but the sort of last result that I'll talk about here is um, is about the domain specialists equilibrium strategies. So when we work backwards in this multiple specialist game, um, we find that there are 
three categories of domain specialist strategies, um, contributors, free riders, and abstainers. So contributors um, are specialists who both agree to enter a deal and actively contribute to the performance of the technology. Free riders agree to enter a deal but do not invest any additional effort, so they take the technology off the shelf. And abstainers won't use the technology at all. And it turns out that these strategies uh, depend mainly on two qualities of, of, the, of the cost functions of these players. So the fixed costs, which are the sort of y-intercept of the cost function, and the marginal profitability, which is like the slope uh, at zero. So these marginal conditions can actually tell you a lot about what strategy a specialist will fall into. The zero and first order approximations tell us a lot. And so here are these two conditions on the like two axes and uh, like based on the cost and revenue curves, you can determine which regime a specialist will fall into. And this sort of might help us understand what domains uh, are, are, are likely to sort of adopt a technology and what strategies they might take. So overall, um, just concluding now, uh, uh, we explore some fundamental behaviors in this process of adaptation and joint production, especially when um, the different entities involved in the interaction have different capabilities and engage in revenue sharing and a strategic distribution of effort. Um, we find bargaining will affect the payoffs and performances uh, across domains, and we classify the different strategies that a specialist might take depending on their cost and revenue functions. And for future directions, we're excited about describing the technology with more than one attribute. So instead of just discussing performance, we can think of like a multi-dimensional space that includes performance and safety or something like this. And the, and the specialists have different utilities over this, which will allow us to describe like if some specialists want to steer the technology in one direction and others want to steer it in another direction, we're excited to sort of explore some of these dynamics. We're also really excited about discussing how regulation can shift incentives with penalties or subsidies and how liability might work uh, in this kind of world. Um, thank you.